So in a recent video, I was like, hey, I'm going to show you how to use, make graphs in Python. I'll include a link, but I didn't have a link. Uh, you know, I had, I had a, a tutorial about how to make um, animated graphs, but I didn't have just a plain, basic, boring graphing in Python tutorial. So that's what this is going to be. I don't even need my paper because I'm not going to write anything down. This is going to be all online, and it's going to be great, or maybe not. Okay, let's see. So, oh, this is a little bit big. Let's see if I make that smaller. Why is that so big? Okay, well, this is Trinket. Um, why is that so big? Trinket. And this is Glow Script, and that's so small. Trinket. Minus, 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 minus. Let's go to View. Actual Size. There we go. Okay. So this is Trinket. Uh, this is where I do almost all of my Python stuff. I do want to show you GlowScript over here. GlowScript is essentially the same thing. Uh, I guess I should sign in. So I click sign in and let's use my account. And uh, here are all your programs. So if, if I go and create a new program in GlowScript, the one thing that it doesn't do is uh, it, it has this that was stupid to make a name of it. Uh, it has this one window, so print one. And then when I run it, it runs in another window. And, and that's fine. And in fact, it, there's a lot of things that I like about that. Uh, but what I don't like and what I like about Trinket, if I go to Trinket and go to new Trinket, Glow Script, I'll show you the other ones in just a second, Python. So I have my coding and my output windows right next to each other. And I like that. And on top of that, if I write for a blog or something like that, if I use... Well, on Wired it does this. You know, I, I do write for Wired. Uh, I can embed this in the blog post, and I think that's awesome. Oh, one other thing. For, for students, uh, this is way better. Because I can write up code in, Py in Trinket, Trinket.io Glow Script. It's the same code. And they can edit it and run it, and they don't even have to have an account. They don't have to log in. They don't have to do anything. It just, boom, it works. Uh, if they want to save it, yeah, they have to do that. Okay, so let's go back over here real quick. Uh, go to New Trinket. I just so should. This is Python. No, I don't. That's fine. I don't want to save that. So Python is real Python. This is actually Python two. Print one just for fun. Uh, and there, it it looks a bit different because it is different. Uh, if it doesn't have the built-in graphing stuff that I use for, for uh, most of the stuff. I use GlowScript, and it has this really cool graphing stuff. There is a way you can graph in here, but this is not a straightforward, and I'm not going to cover it. Uh, if I go back to new Trinket Python 3, no, I don't want to save that because I was just joking. This one you can write, and it's Python 3, but if you'll notice new Trinket, it's got the key next to it. These you can't save without a paid account on Trinket. The other ones you can save. Uh, so. That's why I'm going to use Java 2 GlowScript. Now, it gives you this option of blocks or Python. I don't encourage you to do that, do this. Okay, let's make a graph. I'm gonna start with the most basic, I'm not gonna cover, I'm not gonna cover animated graphs uh, because I forget how to do it and I've already got another video on that. So uh, let's, let's just start with a normal graph. So this is the simplest graph you can make. So the first thing you need is a, uh, thing called G curve. So I'm going to give it a name, G curve. I'm going to call it F1. And it, you can call it whatever you want. We'll change it in a second. Now I'm going to plot a data point on there. So I'm going to say F1.plot. I need to give an X value and a Y value. So let's just say 1, 2. And let's call this graphing practice. Save. And yes, I will give you the code. And run. And so there you see nothing. One, two. There's no, nothing there. Okay, well, let's put two points in there. I think it connects them. So G curve is takes the data points and connects them by line. So I don't only have one data point. There's nothing to connect. So let's say F1.plot. Put another point on there. 1.5. Oh, that's a 4. 1, 2.3. And now run it. Okay, so now there's my one data point, there's my other data point, and there's my graph. There's no labels or anything like that. You can look at the values, uh, and that's as simple as you can get. I could change this to uh, Bob is G curve. Bob. Bob. You got to spell it the correct way. It's case sensitive. 
and now run and it does work. Okay. Um, let's graph a function. Let's graph a quadratic function. So I'm going to delete this. And I'm going simple first, and then we're going to make it better, and then better and better and better. So F1, I like F1. I think I learned that from someone else, and I don't even know why. So that's my thing I'm going to plot. Now I need some data. So let's say uh, x equals 0, dx equals 0 0.01, and then I'm going to say while x is less than 4, uh, I want to plot. So I'm going to say y equals 3 times x squared minus 2 times x plus 1. I don't even know what I'm doing. Now I'm going to plot that data point. So I have an x value, which I just calculated to start at 0, and then I have a y value. So I can say f1.plot. My x coordinate is going to be x, my y coordinate is going to be y, and then that's that. That's going to plot a data point on there. Now I need to move to the next x value, so I'm going to say x equals x plus dx, and that is that. Let's see what happens. Check it out. Graphy. It's a graph. Minus, let's do the minus 8. Let's see what happens. Yeah, that's better. That's a graph. Okay, again, it doesn't have any labels on the on the axis. It doesn't have any of that stuff. What if I want to add all that stuff in there? And then normally I would do this as a numerical calculation with velocity or, or speed or something like that. But you've made a graph. If your point is to make a graph, you just made a graph done. Okay. Um, so let's make a pretty graph. Now, to get a pretty graph, we need an encapsulation for this g-curve. We need something to put in here, uh, put this into. So I'm going to actually go up here. You could just say graph, and I'd do that. And, but I want to give the graph a name for, I always do, and I always call it t-graph or temporary graph, and it's an object type graph. Uh, and so in this, I can give it a whole bunch of parameters that make it very useful. Title equals stuff, x title equals x stuff, see I'm very creative, y title, y, x title, y title, and title are built in, and you, you, if you spell those wrong it's going to get mad, y stuff, did that finish, okay I think it did, yeah, okay so now when I run it, see check that out, stuff, 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 huh? You like that? Oh, well, I like it, so that's important. Uh, okay, so one of the things you'll notice is that sometimes it gets too big, so you can't see the whole thing. Uh, that one's almost there. Right, so I can actually do uh, the width. I can say width equals 400. Uh, if you want, this is bothering me, so I can just press return. That's fine. It works. Height, height equals uh, 322. I don't know why I picked that. There you go. Uh, so that's really, really kind of really kind of weird. Let's go back over here, change this to 500. But you can play with those. Um, oh, how would you know? How would I? How do I know that you can do width and height? Well, if I go back over here to Glow Script, and then go to Click Help, and I click on Work with 3D Objects Graphs, everything that you ever need to know is in here. And so you don't need me, but you get me. Okay, um, let's do something else. Let's do, let's give this a color. Color equals color dot blue. Let's give it a label. Label equals thing one. Now, the, I don't think you can move the location of the, uh, what's that called? Should I, move, should I make this smaller? Let's move it. Let's see. Well, I could turn it off. Should I turn me off? I'll turn me off. There. You don't need to see me. Do you want to see me? Well, I don't care. Uh, you can't move that. that. Not that I'm aware of. Let's make another graph. Let's call this F2 equals G curve color equals color dot red label equals thing 2. And then, so down here, I'm going to make a second y. Let's say y2 equals uh, 2 times x squared minus 4 times x plus 2. I need to plot that one. f2.plot 
x, y2. Now I have two graphs. Isn't that nice? Now there is something else that's very useful in here. There's the g dots. I used this recently. G dots does not connect the line. It just makes dots. And so they're really big, you can see right there, and I can change the size. So I can say radius equals one. And it looks like a line because there's so there's so many of them. Let's change this to point one. There you go. Check that out. You like that? Yeah, it is pretty nice. Okay, I want to keep this as mostly simple as possible. There's a whole bunch of stuff you can do. Uh, but here are some of the things that you might want to do. What if I do this? Um, I'm trying to do the most common things that I, I show how to do. Uh, make, let's see what it's called. Oh, fast equals, fault, equals false. So the default is fast equals true. Fast equals false uses uh, Plotly to make the graph. And so you'll notice it's different. And you have other things in here, and it's really kind of nice because now I can actually, I can adjust the scale. I can zoom in, zoom out. Uh, I can save it, save, download the picture. I can, uh, you know, do a bunch of other things on here. And let's say I don't like these grid lines. Well, I could, there is a way to control the grid lines over here, but I can also click Edit in Chart Studio and it takes me to Plotly, plot.ly. Now I can edit all these things. So I can go to Style, General, I can change the font color, I can change the graph color, I can change everything that you could possibly imagine. I could change. I could change that to points and lines and text. I don't even know what that does. Um, I could change the oh, how transparent it is. See, you could you could more I can even go up here and change the titles. I can say, I don't really like that. I want to say stuff, stuff, stuff. I think you can. Well, you can. You can change everything. Uh, and and then you can embed a plotly graph you can embed and I, I think there was a problem with that I can't remember but you can at least export it so that there is that um, I, I kind of like I kind of like fast equals true though uh, I just like the way it, it looks there's something about this that I really like uh, there was something else I was going to show you something I did recently in maybe that's bigger is that better Something I did that I wanted to show you, and now I can't quite remember what it was. So, I mean, these are the most common things I do. Uh, graphing data points. Oh, yeah, that's it. Data points. Uh, so, sometimes you actually want to graph literal data, and I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, this is a little bit of a wonkiness, okay, because I do this in a weird way. So, let's, let's just uh, let's get rid of this graph. Let's get rid of all this graphing stuff. Let's make a new graph. So I'm going to graph actual data. So I'm going to say t equals uh, some data. So you're, I'm going to have to type some stuff. Uh, 0 0.33, 0 0.5, uh, 0 0.9. See, so that's 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's 5 data points. Let's get one more, 2.2, 6. Okay, and then let's say uh, F equals uh, some other data. So I paired data. Uh, let's say this is going to be, actually, I was thinking about calculating that. Well, whatever. Let's just give it some numbers. Uh, 6.2, uh, 4.1, 1.5, 8.8, 7, how many is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, I need two more. 3.3, 3, uh, 8.8. .8. So I want to plot these data points, and you could have way more than that. Uh, and this is a terrible way to do it if you have tons of numbers, but I have done it and it does work. So now what I want to do is go through and graph each one of these points. So here's a little trick. I'm going to use my idea about list. I will include a link down below for how to deal with lists because I always forget those kind of things. So I'm going to say, uh, let's do it this way, 4i in range length of t. And I'm going to just print i, just so you can see what that looks like. So I'm just going to go through the numbers here, and I'm going to print out i for each one of those numbers. 
So there you see, I have zero, one, two, three, four, five. So that is six numbers. Now, what if I want to do something like print ti? This will print the ith element in the list t. And so there's all my data. Okay, so now it seems pretty easy. What I need to do is just to say up here, I don't want to print them. I want to plot them. So let's say f1.plot. My x coordinate is going to be t, so ti. My y coordinate is going to be f of i. And I run that. There you go. There's my data. I plotted it. It's not very interesting, but it is, it is data. Uh, and, and this is really great because like, if I have real data and I need to analyze it or do something, I can do that. Uh, oh, what if I want to curve fit? That's a great example. What if I want to fit a line to this? There is a way to do that in Python, uh, but in this case, it may actually be easier. Just go over here to fast equals false, and then run, and then edit in Chart Studio, and then go to uh, Analyze, Curve Fitting, Fit. Now I already have, I have to pick which trace I'm going to fit it to. There's only one, so I say thing, well there is two. Uh, thing one, and what kind of function do you want? A quadratic. Uh, I'm going to have to guess at these parameters. One, two, three, and then run it. And then there you get uh, the, the values there. Um, the fit. And it doesn't show the numbers. Let's see, advanced. Yeah, there. And there's the coefficients that fit. It doesn't actually give uh, the the parameters on the graph, which is kind of a bummer. It used to do that. Uh, but you can change the x range that you plot it, the y range, and the x range that you fit it, and all that stuff you can do. And that's kind of cool. So it's very useful if you need to fit actual data. That's the easiest way is just to switch over here in Plotly. Uh, da, da, da. Turn back the camera on so I can say peace out because I think I'm done. I think this answers the very, very basic stuff. Uh, the animated stuff is more complicated. Uh, if you think of something that you don't know how to do, let me know. I'll make a video on it because, you know, I'm just here for you. And that's going to be it. So I'll talk to you guys later.